Did you know all of that that was going on at the congregation? Uh, I think it was kind of eye-opening. Uh, John and Lynn did a terrific job putting this uh, presentation together. This and our ministry fair a few weeks ago, I think really shows that there's a whole lot of stuff going on here at our congregation that maybe at times we don't even realize is happening. Uh, you know, I work here, and, uh, the, and, and, a lot, and all this stuff that, that's going on, uh, I, I kind of get accustomed to it. I don't think about it. And then when we have presentations like this or our ministry fair, I step back and I go, wow, we're, we're doing quite a bit of stuff. And so uh, thank you for your willingness to participate in these things and for your contributions to uh, what's going on here. And uh, in just a few moments, I'm going to have an abbreviated lesson. Um, we've, we've covered a lot of material, a lot of a lot of things today. We've lost an hour's sleep, and uh, so I, I don't want to be talking in your sleep. So, uh, so we're uh, we're gonna we're gonna cut this a little bit short this morning. We'll be looking in uh, Malachi chapter three. If you'd like to turn your Bibles there, um, and I'll get to that in just a minute. Let me do two real quick commercials, and then uh, and then we'll we'll get on with uh, with the show. Um, there are several of us that are going to the Passover. Uh, Seder that uh, the Messianic Jewish uh, synagogue is doing uh, on April the 21st. Uh, I think you've seen it in the bulletin, and you may have heard the announcements and things. There's a, there's a sign-up sheet on the bulletin board by the office. There are also some out in the foyer. If you're interested in going, sign up. You can either drop the, the money by the office or give it to me, and we'll get all that taken care of. Um, I wasn't watching the calendar, <laughs> and the deadline slipped up on me. I got a little bit of a reprieve so that we can go a little bit, a couple of days longer. So if, if you're thinking about it, uh, by this time, by next Sunday, let me know. Uh, sign up if you'd like to go. Those of you that have been can tell others about it, that uh, probably one of the most powerful things about walking through the Passover meal is to recognize the, what Jesus was doing the night of his betrayal and how the Lord's Supper uh, impacts us at directly as a result of Passover meal. One other quick thing, uh, we are uh, going to Israel in November of this year. We have room for a few more. If you would like to go, there are brochures in the foyer. If you'd consider it, like to, to participate in that, um, I would encourage you to do that. We have 26, I think, signed up to go, and I think there's a few more that are thinking about it, and we've got room for 10 or 15 more. So, uh, so if you're interested in that, um, pick up one of the brochures or see me, and, uh, and we'll, we'll uh, get you set up. So today, very quickly, from Malachi chapter 3, we're going to talk about our giving a little bit more. A couple of weeks ago, we talked about um, our giving as we ended our On Point series, and we talked about giving, the fact that God is the source of our giving and that we are the streams of giving, that God gives us so that we can give to others, not to keep it for ourselves, but to use it in giving back to Him and giving to others as well. And as, as we think about that, and as we continue thinking about our prayer, our purpose cards through this, uh, this time, I wanted to do this one last lesson on giving. Now, this passage in Malachi chapter 3 is a favorite passage for preachers to use on guilting their congregations into giving. Now, uh, I hope you don't hear that today. I don't want to use it as a guilt thing. I don't want to use it as a, 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 a fussing uh, thing. I want, to, I want to use it as a challenge to us in our generosity towards God and how that we are to give to Him. So as you think about your purpose card, think generously, not how little you can give to God, but how much can you give? And, and as we think about that, we recognize several things that, um, that God has done for us in His generosity. I read recently that the average American Christian will give three to three and a half percent of their income to God. I don't know where you are in that. I don't have any way of knowing where you are in that. But three uh, percent doesn't sound like a whole lot to me as we think about all that God has done for us. Uh, but three percent is a, is a small amount in many ways. A friend of mine in a congregation a few states away and I talked recently 
And he was telling me that there's a real challenge in their congregation about giving. Now, their church is uh, maybe 100 or, or so members smaller than our congregation. But what he told me was that 10% of their congregation give 90% of their contribution. The other 90% give 10% of the contribution that comes in every Sunday. That strikes me as very lopsided and really out of kilter on the way it ought to be. He also told me that there's about 40 families in that congregation that give zero every week. Plate goes by and they don't put a dime in. 40 families out of that church. And it's a pretty wealthy congregation. But they, they, uh, they follow the checks so that they can give people a receipt at the end of the year for tax purposes so they know who's giving and who's not. And he said it shocked him to find out that those 30 to 40 families, who they were, because he knows their income, this is a pretty wealthy church, he knows their level of income, and he understands that those people could be giving, but they've opted not to give. You know, if I was talking to those 30 or 40 families, one of the things I would say to them is this, if you cannot financially support your congregation, you need to find a church where you can. You need to go to a place where you can put your money in in all good conscience and give to God through that congregation so that that congregation can support and, and do the work that, uh, that God has called them to do. Dave Ramsey, the uh, financial peace guy, uh, talked one time in an interview about, uh, about the giving of American Christians. And he said, if every American Christian would tithe, would give 10% of their income, there'd be some amazing things that would happen as a result. He said, for instance, that there would be no welfare in North America. If Christians gave a tenth of their income, welfare would disappear. All church debt would disappear within a few years. And in fact, within a few years, the whole world could be evangelized if we raised our contribution to... Um, to that, that level. I think that's an amazing thing if you stop and think about what could be done as a result of our giving to God in a special way. If you're following the outline this morning, skip down to point number three. <laughs> this is a terrific sermon, but uh, we're going to cut it down. <laughs> so, uh, but here's what I want you to notice from Malachi chapter three. And I don't want to get hung up on the word tithe. I want you to hear it as generous, generous giving. Uh, there's a whole lesson that we could do, probably should do about tithing sometime, and it would surprise you to find out some things about tithing that it's a little different than what we've, we've, uh, we've been taught over the years. Malachi chapter three. Well, a man robbed God, yet you're robbing me. But you say, how have we robbed you in your tithes and contributions? You are cursed with a curse, for you are robbing me, the whole nation of you. Uh, this uh, passage, and the, one of the reasons I wanted to talk about this today, is because I never understood the importance of this word, rob. Will a man rob God? You know, I read that, you've read it, uh, and it just really didn't sink into me at the seriousness of this word. This is a big, big deal word. The nation of Israel had, uh, as time had passed, they had, you know how it was, they, it was an ebb and flow with Israel. Sometimes they were on fire and faithful to God, and sometimes they were pulling away from Him. One of the ways they were pulling away this time was in how they were giving to God. Uh, in some cases, they were giving, but they weren't giving the best to God. Oh, you want us to give sacrifices instead of giving you the best sheep that I have? I'm going to give you the lame or the blind, God. And, uh, and, and I'm not going to do the very best that I can do for you. I'm just going to try to get by. I'm going to try to go through the motions. And that's kind of what they were doing. And especially in regard to their offerings to God, their gifts and their offerings to Him as, uh, as God uh, directed them. Now, you and I know that God has all the wealth. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago, and, and, and it, you know, it's not rocket science. You read the Bible and you realize God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He owns everything that we think is ours. It is His. He's simply putting it through us, to us, to be stewards of what He's given us. 
it's not my money. It's God's money. Uh, it's all God's money. And he gives me a section of that to use and to glorify him in that use. And I need to be very serious about how I handle the money that God sends to me, however he sends it. Uh, and I think we do as a congregation as well. But this idea of robbing God, the word can mean defraud. It can mean steal, robbing from someone. You remember in the, in the Ten Commandments, God says, thou shalt not steal. Well, that's a big deal. And here he's saying, you're stealing from me. That word also can mean cover or hide. Thought about the story of Achan, Joshua chapter 7. The children of Israel go into the land of promise. They come to the city of Jericho. God says to them, march around the city once a day for six days. On the seventh day, march around seven times, blow the trumpets. And they did, and the walls of Jericho came a-tumbling down. And as they did that, God sent them in to plunder the city. And as he sends them there, he says to them, whatever you take out of the city, all the treasure you take out, that's mine. You don't get to keep it. Well, there's one guy named Achan. And instead of giving to God what God had directed him to do, you remember he went to his tent and he hid, he covered a little bit of the treasure that came out of Jericho. Children of Israel decide now the next little battle's right up the road. We're going to go to the city of Ai, or we would say Ai, and uh, we'll defeat them. They're a small little community. We are a, a, now a seasoned army. We're going to hammer them, and the victory will be ours. But because of the sin of Achan, the Hebrews lose the battle. There was sin in the camp, God told them, and they finally figure out who it was. Achan and his family lose their lives their property is destroyed, and so on. And then once that's settled, the children of Israel move on, and they go to conquer the land of Canaan. I want you to know this. You and I affect one another in our decisions. A lot of times I think that I can make a certain decision, and it's only between God and me. The fact of the matter is, what I decide not only affects me, it affects my relationship with God, but it affects the community as well. Achan caused great harm to the community of Israel because he violated the words of God. And in this case, it had to do with the treasure that they took from the land of Jericho, or from the city of Jericho. Uh, Ananias and Sapphira claim to have sold a piece of property for a certain amount of money, and they wanted to give it all to God. So they brought the money in, and the question was, did you, is this all? Did you, give it, did you sell it for this? Yeah, yeah, we sold it for this. And you remember that they lied to the Holy Spirit. They had kept back some of the money and claimed that the money they were giving was the whole amount for that property. Both of them died. See, this is a serious thing when we talk about our giving to God. It's not uh, something that God treats lightly God is very serious about how we handle him and how we handle the monies that we give to him. And so as, uh, as you and I think about our, our gifts to God, the fact that God says we can rob him, we're also mindful of the fact that we can, in that robbing, we can rob ourselves. There's a story of a minister who went to a another congregation to preach one Sunday evening. He walked into the foyer, and uh, he and his son walk into the foyer, and there's a box out in the foyer called the alms box. And uh, they, everybody, a little sign says that you in, they were invited to contribute money to the alms box, and it would be distributed uh, as the elders, uh, at the elders' discretion. So the preacher thinks, well, that's a great idea, and he puts $10 in the box preaches his sermon, and then when the service is over, one of the elders came to him and said, Preacher, the way we pay our guest speakers is we give them the entire contents of the alms box on Sunday evening when, after they've preached. So they open the alms box and reach in, and there is one $10 bill in the box. Well, here, Preacher, here's your payment for tonight. So the dad and the son are walking to the car, and the son looks at his dad, and he says, you know, dad, I was just thinking, if you had to put more in, you'd have gotten more out. <laughs> and that's true biblically as well. God will tell us that the more we give, the more we sow, the more we're going to reap. 
And that's true in regard to our giving also. So we can rob God, we can rob ourselves, we can rob others. But I'm, notice this next part, verses 10 and 11. Bring the full tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and thereby put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you a blessing until there is no more need. I will rebuke the devourer for you so that it will not destroy the fruits of your soil. Your vine in the field shall not fail to bear, says the Lord of hosts. God challenged them and he challenges us to step out on faith. Give me the best. Give me the first fruits. Give me the, 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 the generous gift, not just what you can get by with, but the most you can give. And notice what happens next in verse 12. Then all the nations will call you blessed, for you will be a land of delight, says the Lord of hosts. All the nations around Israel got to look at the nation. And when Israel did what Israel was supposed to do, they prospered under the hand of God. And the nations looked around and said, why? Why is this going on? Why are you blessed? Why are you receiving all these benefits? And the answer is, our God has blessed us. We are a blessed people. And a lot of times we get so used to our prosperity that we don't realize how good we've got it. But God has blessed us in abundant ways and God wants to continue to bless us. So when we think about our God, are we tipping or are we tithing? Are we holding back or are we giving generously? Uh, how are we looking at what God is doing? And I want us to look very quickly, look at it from God's perspective. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life, everlasting life. How generous is God to you? It doesn't get any greater than that. What would God give for you? Anything, everything. In fact, he gave you greatest gift he could give. Now let's turn it around for just a minute. In our giving to God, we so love God that we gave what? The least we can get by with? We gave the blind, the lame, the broken, or do we give the best? We give the best to who he is and what he wants for us. Christian minister once invited a very wealthy man to invest, to give to a Christian cause. The man immediately turned him down, and he told the, the minister, he said, as far as I can see, this Christian business is just one continuous give, give, give. The minister thought about it for just a minute, and he said, yeah. He said, and I want to thank you for the best definition of Christianity I've ever heard. That's what we are. We give, we give, we give. And it's not just money. There's time, there's ability, there's friendship, there's encouragement. There's all kinds of things that we give. You just saw, as Lynn presented this to us, many things you have given as a congregation. So as you're filling out your purpose card this week, I want you to think very soberly, very clearly, very prayerfully about what God has given to you and how you can respond to that in regard to contribution. So the first thing, the best thing, the most important thing is that we give ourselves to God and then we can give the other things. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. We treasure our God and we give things to God because of who he is. We're going to stand and sing an invitation song. And if you haven't yet given yourself to God, we encourage you to do that. If you believe he's the son of God, Jesus is the son of God, we want to encourage you to put him on in baptism. And we're going to uh, encourage you to do that. If you need prayer, you can come forward or go to the prayer room. Let's sing. And if you need to come, come now.